Welcome back, everybody. February the 1st, Monday Morning Briefing, Episode 20. Hard to believe we're on Episode 20. I've been doing this for 20 weeks, so let's keep it going. Real quick, we had a cow show this weekend, and yesterday, actually, so got home a little late. We would have been home even later, but um, kids were tired, and it was going to run long, and so uh, brother's class that he was going to show in the commercial heifers, it was going to be the very end, and so it was already seven o'clock when sister got done with her her second set and so we went ahead and just headed back because we knew it was going to be quite a while and they've got school today and all we had the grandparents in town this weekend and so they were able to um, come and see both the kids show and everything so at the show they did this was the very last show of the series this has just been a little jackpot series and this show the last show was they were going to go ahead and present their year-end awards at the end of the series and we were already told that my little girl was up. She had enough points to win a buckle for the series. And so we were real excited about that. She ended up fourth place in the series. And so that was really good since how we had missed a few shows, two or three shows, I think, or something, because it was early on and we just couldn't make those so we were moving. It was really cool. We didn't tell her that she was going to win a buckle. And so she was really surprised whenever during the award ceremony when they called her up there and she won a really, really nice buckle and a uh, deal that goes on her show stick out of silver. It was really, really cool. She got a big rib and she was real excited. But before that even happened, during the showmanship, she showed in the Pee Wee showmanship with her heifer and she ended up winning the showmanship class. And at this, since it was the end of the year, this particular showmanship class they were giving buckles away for. So she won a buckle with the first class she showed in at this show yesterday and she was already on cloud nine. She had to put it on, she wore that buckle all day long. And then, like I said, she ended up, we knew she was winning the buckle for the year end uh, at the end of the series but so it was like man she's got two and mama made a deal with her with both kids that any buckle that they win that I would build them a custom belt for so I've got two belts to build now for her because she's won two buckles this weekend and this can get out of hand pretty quickly um, I can see me being in debt to both kids for a lot of belts come another five or six years I don't know if I'll be able to fulfill that contract, but we'll just have to kind of play that by ear and see how it goes. Um, but she's excited. She already knows what she wants on her belt, so we're going to try to work on that some this week as well. We've got a lot of other belts that we've got to get done and catch up on um, that we've gotten drawn out and stuff. we just got to do a lot of tooling on that. So that was the show. It went good. Heifer did good. Everything was really good. Um, it was nice to have the grandparents there so they could see her win, her, her buckle and everything, and and we've made a lot of good friends at those shows and and we really enjoyed them so the next series that now this series is over and it's called the lone star classic series is what the what the show is called and it's over now but it will start back up again i think in april april or may they'll start again and so we'll definitely be doing doing that one and it's just kind of a little local jackpot i think they have one show a month and um, it's a lot of fun it gets it's good experience for the kids um because they they're so little they can't show yet in 4-h or ffa or anything like that but these jackpots they do have peewee classes and um and her heifer is pretty nice and so she's done really well with it and so we've got a couple like i said we've got we had three calves this year so we've got some on the ground that hopefully next year or hopefully by the time the series starts um maybe later in the series we'll be able to start putting a couple of those um into the classes as well as far as Saturday, I was planning on coming into the shop a little bit, but we ended up getting kind of on an old project at the house. And um, we in our barn, there is a basically two stalls that somebody had turned into a chicken coop. And so we have our chickens kind of in there, but they're kind of free range. They just kind of wander around all over the place. And I wanted to cut that coop in half, basically, and repurpose one of the stalls, basically, that it is. And so we ended up working on that. We got the chicken wire down, all the wiring down, um, any gates that were involved, and we kind of shifted it all around and made a one stall size coop for the chickens. We only got 11 hens, so that's plenty of room, um, and one guinea, but we got plenty of room for them in there, and we only put them up at night. The rest of the day, they're out and about all over the place. Um, and then that stall, I took the stall front off, basically, and then we put pallets down, leveled the ground, put pallets down, and that's where our hay storage will be for quick access hay. And so we've got quite a bit of hay, uh, square bales that we we swap some round bales for for squares. And so we've got that with our hay guy, 
and hopefully we can get quite a bit of that in the barn now instead of having to get you know 20 25 bells at a time um we go through it you know about a bell a day bell and a half a day and so that'll get us a little bit more storage in the barn and um and that way don't make so many trips he just lives right down the road it's not a big deal but i want to get it out of his way so we did that that ended up taking a better part of the day but the barn looks a lot better we threw a bunch of stuff away um and then just kind of worked on that and came into town ate lunch and then went back to the house and got ready to come to the, go to the show yesterday and so i didn't get a whole lot done in here this weekend but now the series is done we are and we're into february january's out of the way so january always feels kind of unproductive just because there's so much going on business wise and uh end of year new year kind of thing going on and so we had a lot of uh, administration stuff we had to take care of but last week we did make quite a bit of progress on uh custom orders we've got some custom orders done and shipped we've got some stock items put together we'll show you in a minute that we're gonna that we're starting to stock the wallets that i did show yet last week we did put those on the website and we've sold quite a few of those so thank y'all whoever bought those um we put it on our stories and stuff like that but um they're really cool i'm gonna try to keep a few of those wallets i don't know if that particular wallet will stay around just because that's kind of a specialty side of harness that i got that i was showing you and so if that if i if i can't get something similar we'll just get rid of that style and i'll do one just like it but in another leather that i can get more regularly um, because i want to do one out of hermit oak harness too because that one is a really really nice nice wallet i did get a little bit done on claudia's bag we got one side of the bag tooled up completely the other side has been beveled and backgrounded so we'll finish that probably this morning i'll knock that out right quick so that can be drying and then we'll be ready to do any coloring oiling antiquing whatever and then get our uh, fur panels sewn on here after we get our buckle pieces the buckle or the d d ring hangers i got those tooled and all dyed there's four of these and we're, what we're going to do is because that coyote hide has a lot of dark brown in it it's got some dark brown some black um, just stuff like that and so i want to pull some of those highlight colors out of there uh, just to kind of accent the bag so what we're going to do is a, a dark brown background i'm not going to two-tone this bag i know i two-tone almost everything but this bag i'm going to leave it more of a honey finish but i'm going to do dark brown in the background and i think that'll pull some of those darker browns out of that fur and kind of accent that and then I, we decided to do the hangers in dark brown and so I dyed these with Fibing's uh, dark brown dye just regular pro oil dye and then I antique them the reason I antique them is sometimes if if you're trying to get a consistent color and you go to dyeing something tooled with a dauber a lot of times you can't get down in the little cuts and stuff without putting more and more and more dye on there and then you sometimes can get a darker color than you intended to get by applying too much dye. So I just dyed them to where they looked even and then the cuts and bevels, you could see the highlight of the regular leather under there. And so I ended up, I just antique them with uh, dark brown uh, antique paste, five beans antique paste. And um, that worked great. Now they look dyed evenly, but those will sew on in this vicinity here. And then once those are sewn in place, then we'll put our fur in. I'm gonna cut my slot like I, talked about before that, that that fur panel will go up underneath there and then we'll sew the fur on so that'll be interesting i'll catch that on video i am tape i am filming some of the build on this it won't be a build project video it'll just be a video put together of us building this bag it may end up becoming a pattern pack but i've got a lot of issues i've got to iron out as i make this bag because i've never made one like this and so just how i work is let's just make one and see what pitfalls we discover along the way and so i don't want to i don't want to send out patterns that may or may not work so obviously we're creating patterns as we go we'll iron out all the details of how this bag is going to go together and um, the zipper placement and all that kind of stuff and then i'll probably revamp modify and update the patterns so that they're right and then we'll get with a printer and uh and do the printed packs we do have a printer and uh, we're going to meet with him on some other patterns because we have another video that I'm gonna be working on, another project, which is a rope bag. I have a lot of people ask about rope bags. I get more text messages, DMs, uh, emails about, do I have any rope bag patterns? I do not because they're big. You see how big this is? This is the biggest thing in my shop that I will ever tool usually. Um, even a saddle seat as far as just tooling window 
is not this big. Saddle seat leather is bigger than this, but you're tooling a jockey, maybe the dish, and two, you know each jockey. So each window is not near as big as this. This is one of the biggest things that you will tool if you have aspirations to make a rope bag. Other than maybe making a duffel bag or a fully tooled seat cover for a 57 Chevrolet or something, you're gonna, you're gonna have uh, bigger things. But most commonly in the saddle shop, this is the biggest thing that we tool. But we do have an order for one and it's gonna be really, really neat. Um, we're designing the pattern for it now. And I'll put a video together. It'll be kind of like a project video, I'll basically show you how I make this bag, uh, how I make the rope bags. And that way you can kind of see what I'm doing and hopefully that'll help you. But there won't be a pattern pack. There won't be anything like that available for it. But you, uh, there will eventually, but just not when the video comes out. But it'll be a good informational video that you can get a lot of information off of and certainly build one of these bags. Um, I'll probably, uh, what I'll probably do is when I post the videos, I'll do a little blog post and embed the video in there. And in the blog post, I'll try to have the basic dimensions of how big this thing is and how wide my gusset is and that sort of stuff. But you'll kind of have to figure it out as you go along, but they're not super hard to build. They're just big. They're, they're very large. Um, and honestly, they go together almost identically to the round purse that we do, the round crossbody. Um, that is basically a miniature rope bag. The only difference is that my rope bags, I do three compartments. So we'll have a center divider and then a front and back panel. I like the two compartments when I build a rope bag because to me it makes them a little bit more stable. This seems like they stand a little better. They don't they don't collapse on themselves. If you lean them up against a fence, you know, by the chutes or something, they don't they don't just crumple over. They, it's, they got a lot of body to them and they'll stand up on their own, uh, especially with that semi-flat bottom just works better so that'll be a fun video we're going to start working on that this week and um you know usually if you want to kind of an idea on time frame i i allot a week to make this bag so if i'm making a rope bag i've got a week in it because it's going to be um usually like a day to draw the floral pattern whatever we're doing get all that designed on both back and front panels and then a day each panel to tool so i'll spend a whole day tooling one pretty much a day. I mean, it could be, depending on the pattern, it could be five hours, six hours, but let's face it, that's pretty much a whole day. You've eat, you've eat up the good part of a day um, doing that, so I just say one day. And so um, that's three days in just artwork, and then you can usually put it together in a day and a half, two days, depending on what you're doing for straps and things like that. My straps are pretty simple. I don't get too crazy with them, but, um, but like I said, they go together pretty easy as far as construction the bulk of your time is going to be in the artwork so if you're doing a rough out one with somebody's brand right in the middle go together real quick not a problem at all um, but if you're fully tooling them you've got quite a bit of time sitting there the other thing that i worked on on friday real quick before i went home was the deer we got the if you're following my stories you probably saw that we finally pulled the deer into the shop i measured all the little spots they're all pretty much the same but any kind of i advise any kind of woodwork type things that you're trying to accent with leather measure each area um, just check measurements because there was some differences between the three different um, insets where these leather pieces were going and it's small 16th eighth inch whatever but so i overcut these just a little bit maybe an eighth inch so they actually don't fit in there right now we'll tool in we're going to leave a, a space around the outside a, a good relief with the tooling and that way i can either sand it with the finisher or I can actually trim it. If it's enough to where I can trim with a knife, I'll trim that. Otherwise we can probably sand to fit. And that way they'll seat in there really, really nicely. And you won't have any kind of gap between the outside of the leather and where the, the, the trim work goes basically. And so we gotta get these designed as well. I'm gonna try to work on these at some point this week when I've got a little bit of downtime, uh, waiting on something to dry or whatever, I'll start adding in the artwork. We're gonna put the deer score in there, the ranch where it was shot, and um, I don't know, maybe it's name. We kind of named the deer. We called the, Wal the deer Watusi. That was the deer's um, kind of farm name as far as um, seeing that deer for a couple of years, and that's just what we called him. Um, and so I might, I might tool that in there as well. Other little project that my little boy ended up putting on my list for this week is his boot because his heel popped off. This is not the first time I don't do boot repair. So um, hopefully nobody that I've told, sorry, I can't do your shoe repair for you sees this video, but 
<laughs> well, I've always had people come in the shop asking me if I do boot or shoe repair. I do not, but I can definitely glue a heel back on. So we're gonna do that for for him. These little boots for these kids, they're they're cool looking. Like they're they're not bad, but they're not good. I mean, it's just paper paper heel. It's just not it's just not good construction. But it's not the first pair of boots he's kicked the heel off of. So luckily he found it though. Uh, he had one pair he didn't even know where the heel was, so he lost it somewhere in the mix. So we're gonna work on that, try to get that glued up for him. Uh, we got pretty much all our repairs done last week. I've got one repair left. I've gotta throw some stirrup leathers in. We're gonna do that first thing today, then all my repairs will be done. I've got one I'm waiting on stirrups from. Um, I may have mentioned this before, but great place to get stirrups. If you are looking for, if you're a custom saddle maker or even doing a repair, you're just looking for a good outlet for some good stirrups for customers, uh, be sure and check out Nettles Stirrups. And they're in Madisonville, Texas. I've been using them for years. That's who I get my stirrups from. If you've seen our stirrup covering video, those are nettle blanks that I use. Their stirrups aren't cheap. They're not, you know, the cheapest ones out there, but they're very good. They're reliable. Um, I really like them, and they're good, just good quality. And so that one repair saddle, we ended up ordering some um, overshoe bells. Guys got a pretty wide foot, so we went ahead and got some overshoes, and we got them in the they, what, what nettles calls their Duke stirrups. They used to be called their... I don't remember what they were called, but they were called something else before. But now they call them Dukes. Basically, they're just not as much lamination in the wood, so the stirrup's a little bit thinner. I think it's missing like one or two layers. And they don't spend all the time on the finish work, so they're not like they're premium stirrups, premium oak stirrups, which is what kind of put them on the map. Um, they're real thick. They're all laminated. Uh, beautiful stirrups. The finish is, is furniture quality, and they do a lot of exotic woods and stuff like that. The Dukes are more utilitarian but they still look beautiful. I mean, they're really, really nice stirrups. I put them on custom saddles because a lot of cowboys like them just because it's a simple wood exposed stirrup that's not an arm and a leg. And so we'll do that. But anyway, I got those coming for him. The other one, throw some stirrup leathers in. The saddles, I will show you that here in just a second. We made some progress on that. Uh, quick update on the die situation. I do have, I, I sent my order in Friday and so they have everything, should be making them. I think they told me a week turnaround with Texas Custom Dies is who I used for uh, getting our dies made. I've used them in the past. That's who's made the dies that I do have. And um, I was really shocked. They were like, yeah, a week, maybe, maybe not even that. And so I was like, man, they've really, they're working. I mean, they're rolling. So I sent them patterns. I sent the, I sent them PDF patterns of money clip fold over. I think we call it a money clip wallet on the YouTube video. If you haven't seen that video, you can go check that out. I show you how to make this little wallet right here. It's very simple. It folds in half, a little bifold. It's got a pocket on each side, real simple pocket for just a few cards or whatever. And then we put this spring bar money clip in there, spring clip. This is one of my hottest selling wallets, always has been. We've made, I don't know how many of these wallets. And usually when we get a belt order, they usually want a matching wallet. So this is a very popular style. It's, it's kind of a little minimalist wallet. It doesn't hold a lot of stuff, doesn't have a lot of room for junk. So you can hold a few cards, your ID, whatever in there, they'll stack on each side and then cash. Very simple, very quick to build um, and a good money maker because you can put to use a lot of your scrap leather. And like we said, what, we're, what our plans is with the clicker is to start taking some of those project videos that we've done in the past and then creating material packs to go along with that. The material pack situation is like this. So we've had, uh, I had one person that bought the knife scabbard material pack and thank y'all very much for those that did buy those. Uh, I hope it's helping you. It makes it a little easier. You don't have to cut those things out. They're not super hard to cut out, but they are kind of a pain in the butt. And if you're trying to do a dozen knife sheaths, cutting that little pattern out by hand, is just kind of, it's kind of a booger and we've got a die for it. You can buy a six pack is the best option, obviously, for 40 bucks, you get six of those things. And it's all Herman Oak and they're clicked out, ready to go. All you gotta do is pop your tooling window on there and tool them or form them and then tool them, whatever you're gonna do. But I had one customer that thought it came with the pattern pack. It does not come with the pattern pack. And the only reason it doesn't is because I have so many, that's an older video, uh, well, from last year. And a lot of people already bought that pattern pack. So I didn't want to put a package together and force people to buy the pattern pack and the material pack in one package and have that be the only way to get it because then we'd have to charge a little bit more for the material pack and some guys already have the pattern. So I, I thought, let's just keep them all separate. So it, if, if a person wants to watch the video and go into their shop and build that, the information's free, it's in the video. If a person just needs the pattern, they have all the leather, they can buy the pattern pack. If they don't have any of it and they want to build it, 
between the video, the pattern pack, and the material pack, they're good to go. Then buy buy those two things and be be ready to go. But um, but I just wanted to clear that up because I'm gonna do all of them that way. At, at first we thought about, well, we'll just put a package together where it's like a, a upgraded, but a lot of people have already bought these patterns, especially the flip, uh, the money clip wallet and the bifold wallet, which are the two that we're having dies made for. Um, a lot of people have already bought that pattern pack, so you don't need another copy of it. It's a PDF file you have access to forever, so um, you don't need two PDF files that you have access to. It, one and you can print off as many as you need so what we'll do is we're going to add the material pack that we'll have since we're getting the dies made i already have a die for the outside so i actually have a bucket full of backs and um, all that are herman oak pulled down ready to go all you gotta do is put the insides in there but if you'll give me about a week from what they said getting my dies if you'll give me about a week i will have a material pack that will have the back and the interiors so it'll have this interior liner and both these pockets clicked out you don't have to cut them out they'll be the right thickness all you'll have to do is tool your backs put them together and you'll be good to go i did not have the holes made for the money clip here because if you do want to use a wire clip instead of this spring bar clip then you would only put one hole in there and it would be a smaller hole or if you didn't even want to put the the money clip in there at all and just have that out of it and just have just a nice fold over wallet you could do that so I opted not to put the holes in there my pattern pack shows you where those holes go so it's not a, it's not an issue it's basically right dead center so that's not hard to figure out um, the other one that we did was the bifold and so if you go to our YouTube channel you'll find the bifold project video and that video that that one's the one I'm really excited about because cutting out and it's a little version of a tea pocket and we will do tea pockets I will do a video on a complete um, actual how to do actual tea pockets uh, my bifold there's one little tea pocket in there it's very simple it's a good one to start if you haven't ever done tea pockets that one will kind of show you the concept but i want to do either the uh, an upgraded version of the clutch wallet or a roper wallet which we've had a lot of people asking us to do a roper wallet or long wallet when we do that we will do a series of tea pockets and i will have dies made for those so that we because cutting tea pockets out is just boring <laughs> It's not fun. Um, it just kind of, it just, it's just not fun. And so it's a lot easier if you can just click them out and you've got them all cut out. And so we will have dies made for that. But the bifold, yes, we have the dies getting made for that one as well, which will save a lot of time for making that wallet. And that wallet's been real popular. I've actually sold a bunch of those wallets um, on the, I mean, through, you know, email and stuff off the website and in the store. I've made a few stock ones and, and people really like that design. Um, and we'll probably do a more elaborate bifold project later and come up with a um, kind of a little nicer version of that bifold more maybe a you know classic kind of look mine's a little bit different and uh, made a little bit more simplistic but anyway those dies are getting made i'm also getting hang on one second sheepskin also get a lot of calls people wanting sheepskin may not have a saddle maker close by let me tell you something if you have a saddle maker near you somebody you know that builds saddles or something like that near you in your vicinity somewhere even if it's a little bit of a drive you can usually i'm not going to speak for every saddle maker but usually you can give them a buzz and say hey i do some small leather good items whatever i'm getting in the leather work i was wondering if you'd sell me some scrap sheepskin most of the time, most guys will say, yeah, come by, and I'll give you a piece or whatever, you know, or, or sell you a, a chunk or something like this. This is a drop off off one skin of sheepskin. So this is what I get every time I do uh, put sh sheepskin on skirts on the saddle. This is what I'm left with. I cut it up and I use it like everybody does for putting on your antique or putting on oil or, or tan coat or whatever. It's basically my applicator is what I use to, to, to put do our finish work. And I get a lot of people that email, can you ship me some? Can you sell me some? Whatever. I don't have enough all the time to ship like to everybody um, all over the place, but we've had enough of call for it, and I found a, a little lead on where I can get some more if to, to try to keep up with demand. But I'm going to try to just use what we have because we usually have a lot of scrap. So I had a die made, a coaster die, and yes, we'll do a coaster um, project video too here, here pretty soon because my wife's got an idea on on some coasters that would be neat so I, coasters are just a good project they always sell well and 
people like them as gifts especially but I'll, i killed two birds with one stone i got a three and three quarter inch coaster die made so it's basically a round circle that's all they're doing um it's a three and three quarter round circle and i will use that to cut out these applicators because it is much faster than cutting these with scissors obviously um i usually use a blade and cut them into, into, into little square pads and then trim them but what i'm going to do is we will start using that coaster die to cut the sheepskin out into round pads and we will put bags together of those i don't know how many i don't know how big the bags will be but we will put some bags together and put those on the website and try to keep those on the website for anybody that does want to buy some sheepskin applicators um i don't know what they're going to cost they're not going to be super expensive uh like i said but it'll it'll cover our time of cutting them out and packaging them and that kind of deal it's not that the sheepskin is doesn't have a value it's just that a lot of times if a guy's building i build two saddles a month maybe usually one sometimes none just kind of depends on how how the the month is running between creating videos and doing other things but used to, we would have piles of this stuff in the shop. And I mean, we'd have local guys that were piddling with leather or doing leather work or whatever. And we, they would come in and we'd give them a bunch. Um, I don't have that much to spare. I mean, if, if somebody's kind of local and comes by, I'll still give them, give them some, take that, you know, whatever. But um, at some point, I'll probably end up, what I'll probably end up having to do is buy seconds or misruns of sheepskin because I'm sure you guys are looking for a good supply of where to get those. I don't know if we'll sell a bunch of them, but I'm going to put them on the website just so if you do want them, you can go there and buy a bag and it'll have a bunch of them that are to be around. All you have to do is trim your hair on there so you don't get fuzzies in your finish and um, and they'll be good to go. So we will be adding that for those who have been asking about sheepskin and that'll just make it easy to where we'll have them packaged up, ready to ship, and you can just purchase those and we'll send them out. But yeah, the dyes, like I said, the dyes, Texas Custom Dyes, who I'm, who I'm using and... Um, so far so good i've never had any problems with them before and a lot of people that use them and they're quick turnaround their dyes are really nice they're really sharp and so we're real excited about that hopefully we'll have those next week and then we'll we'll start cutting stuff out and getting the project kits together or the material packs together like i said the first two that we'll be doing we'll be doing the fold over uh, money clip wallet and our bifold wallet so those will become full material packs it will have all the leather in there all out of herman oak um, and then when you, if you want to purchase those, I'll probably the wallets, I may do them when it's like three to a pack. And that way, you know, you can get three wallets out of there. They'll have three interiors, three bodies, all that stuff will be there. And then, um, we may even do a six pack too, like we did on the knife sheaths, but, but we'll kind of figure that out, but we will let you know when that is up. Hopefully the dies get here next week. I've probably cut next weekend. So maybe by the next Monday morning video, not this next one, but the one after, maybe we'll be uh, letting you know that they're up on the website. But follow my Instagram stories for sure, and we'll for sure put those up there whenever we do. Um, project video, I'm working on that today as far as finalizing that. So hopefully we'll be getting one of those out. And we're also going to do a few other little tip videos and stuff. So we're in February, we're ready to rock, and we're going to be creating videos. Let me show you real quick what we've got done on the saddles. I'm going to grab some more coffee. All right, so here's our roper, and we got the skirts on it Friday, uh, Thursday, Friday, I can't remember, one day. But So it's had all weekend to dry. I like to put my skirts on on a Friday or a Thursday just so, because my weekends I may or may not be in the shop, and I'm usually not working on saddles. If I am in the shop, I'm usually working on catch-up stuff or fun projects I want to work on that are just for me and so <clears throat> it gives two days it's not tying up two days during my week to where these can dry real good so so they're completely dry and we'll do final cut today get our ports cut out of there shorten up our back my skirts are usually a little longer and I'll trim the back off I usually don't do anything with the bottom and we'll cut our ears up in here and all that and then we'll pull them off and get them blocked and all that stuff and um, we'll get our candle back on and we'll get our skirts plugged and wooled, and then we'll get them on there and get our rigging sewn and all that stuff. Um, we made a weaver order because I was out of sinew, so I ordered some from them, and so hopefully that'll be here tomorrow. I doubt it'll be here today, but I need some more sinew to sew my rigging. So same thing that's going on over here. That's kind of where we're at with this saddle. Is I'm, you know I'm out of I'm out of lace and tape or sinews. We used to call it lace and tape, but um, I'm out of that to sew my rigging. So as soon as that gets here, we'll get that that sewn but these skirts have already been wooled and plugged and so they're already screwed on they're in place they're ready to go once i get the riggings 
sewn on, then we'll fit our housing and all that and then get the seat going and this saddle will be, be moving. Both of these saddles are basically almost at the same same point now so hopefully these will finish around the same time. We've got all the small stuff already made as far as the rig catchers and conchos and uh, I'll probably put fenders together today or tomorrow. And then something I did on Friday as well, um, had a little bit of downtime waiting on sheepskin to dry and stuff like that and so I took a bunch of the knife sheaths that we had clicked out and We've gotten to where we're selling these pretty regularly, so I have one basket stamped for the case trapper and one with the crazy stamp, and we're gonna try to keep those in stock. So Claudia said, I'm down to one of each. So I said, well, let me go ahead and dive into our little material pack bin over here where we have a bunch of these already cut out, and I went ahead and clicked out, or, or took a bunch of them, and basket stamped six of them and six of these. So we'll put those on the sales floor they're already on the website so if anybody does want one they're just a this version here will be a light oil lighter medium oil and uh, just sewn real simple classy little knife knife sheath and then i also drew up a new pattern and for one so i'm going to make a tap off of this one this little floral pattern nice and clean it uh it's something simple but it looks cool and i will make a tap off of this and then we will add this one to the website and we'll make six or dozen of these and this will be one that will always be on the website as well until we decide to discontinue it and come up with a new pattern. So um, should have some of these up hopefully by the end of the week on the website, the little floral ones. And I'll probably just do them light oil antique, something simple. And then we might do a version of it that's like two-tone brown, two-tone black, that kind of thing. But just trying to work in a few more um, stock items for the floor and for the website just for people, customers. That's a good idea in your shop if you have downtime or scrap leather is to every once in a while try to make just a few items just to even if they're in a box under your bench you know where they're going to be nice and clean and safe and not get uh, messed up by lighting or something like that um, and that way if somebody calls and says hey I'm, I'm kind of in a bind I, my knife scabbard broke or whatever I just need one or I need a new one because I'm going to a wedding or something you can uh, say yeah I've got a few come by and look at them you know even if it's three or four uh, it's better to have that product. Remember, leather doesn't make you any money if it's sitting in a bin or on, a, on or rolled up on a shelf. It only really makes you money until it is an item. So if you can work in a little bit of time, you know, I didn't make a hundred of these. I'm just making six of each. And if the demand continues to grow, then yeah, we'll get to a point where we'll make more and more and try to keep more and more in stock. But for right now, it didn't take me a lot of time to tool six of each of these and just have them out there. And, um, it's a nice way to make a little bit of money when somebody comes in and they see something you know they may not have come to you to buy a knife sheath they may have been there for another reason but if you've got them on the floor or you've got them on your bench or however you're marketing your business and they see it and they go hey i like that let me how much is that let me have one you know and so it's like a it's a nice kind of freebie sale that uh you wouldn't have gotten any other way because it nobody's going to ask you to build them a knife sheath if they weren't thinking about it already so so we had a few visitors come to the shop last week uh one of them was William with William James Leather. And, uh, well, yeah, I think it's William James Custom Leather, but he's in Welder. Welder is a little bitty town. Uh, my wife gets feed there once a week. Uh, we get feed there at the Richter's, real nice pit folks. We buy our cow feed there. It's where we get the, the show feed. And um, But he lives in that little town, I guess right outside of town or something on a little ranch. But if you don't follow him on Instagram, he does very, very good work. Be sure and check him out. Um, does a lot of belts, a lot of wallets, things like that. Really neat guy, come by and visited the shop. I think it was Monday or Tuesday, and um, we just had a, had a real big visit, and uh, it, it was nice. Uh, finally, I've been following him for a long time, so it was good to finally meet him, and now we're neighbors. Like, he's literally, I bet it's 15 minute drive, maybe. It's just the town next over, and so, but he came by, so we expect to see him a little, little bit more, and we may even put him to work, you know, at some point in here, maybe get him, get him on a video or something in here tapping away if I get in a bind and need some help because he's, he's a really good tooler so if you haven't followed him it's William James Custom Leather on Instagram so check him out and uh, we also had a couple uh, folks in a father and son from Lavernia and I call them the Johns both their name was Johns I just kept calling them the Johns but they were they were real nice guys they came in to visit and uh, and so I wanted to give them a shout out and thank them for coming by really appreciate them coming to the shop and um, we just really enjoyed the the, the the coffee and the visit so um, if you're ever in the area be sure to stop by the shop if you're uh, coming on a special day or you're gonna be driving through or something like that and it's like on a friday or something or on a tuesday and thursday especially 
um, and it's going to be early morning, you might give me a buzz or a heads up and just so that I know, know you're coming. Uh, like I said, Tuesday and Thursday mornings, I'm usually doing a podcast interview that mor morning first thing. If, if we can schedule it that way, that's how I like to do it because we're all craftsmen on the, on the podcast, so we all got to get back to work. So I don't want to take up somebody's middle part of the day. So if you do come by here um, early morning, Tuesday or Thursday, um, you might give me a heads up and see what my schedule's like. Uh, before you come because there'll be a sign on the door and I hate for you to sit out there on the porch and and uh, the hot coffee's in here and you're out there sitting on the porch waiting on me to get done with the interview. Speaking of Lost Trade, it was a really good episode this week and so uh, last week we had Justin Walker that uh, was the episode that we did and he owns Rockin' Out Hardware or Rockin' Out Jewelry and we've been getting a lot of conchos from him for, for quite some time, um, probably since about 2017 or so. And he just makes a really nice um, concho that's affordable, that, that you can put on a saddle, and it doesn't look super cheap. It's really good quality stuff, but it's not super expensive. And that, that's kind of what we talk about on that podcast. He's a custom silversmith and engraver, does a lot of custom high-end jewelry pieces and one-offs and stuff like that, but that's not the bulk of what he does. He's taken his knowledge of the custom silver work side and then pushed it over and figured out a way to mass produce an item and do thousands of units of a certain um, design that he's come up with. And for conchos, for me, I don't do a lot of jewelry stuff. We may eventually maybe try to get some in here, but my main deal with him is the conchos and as a saddle maker not every customer wants to spend you know four hundred dollars five hundred dollars on a set of hand engraved custom conchos and so this is a really good option to have something that's contemporary it's uh, eye catchy really good design and really sets the saddle off and so we've used those we've always had trouble finding a really really good stock concho for our custom saddles when a customer doesn't want to upgrade to a custom set and because we've got plenty of silver engravers and silversmith friends of ours that can do custom hardware on saddles, but it does add to the saddle cost uh, considerably, and it's and so not every customer wants to do that. So anyway, rocking out jewelry, rocking out hardware. Look them up on Instagram, Facebook. Um, Instagram is going to be probably the best place, and then they also have a website. And you can go on there and buy um, all kinds of hardware. They've got a lot of buckles and stuff for head stalls, spur straps, um, just just a lot of stuff. Go check out their website. And, um, and check them out. But that's who was on the podcast last week. I think it was a good episode. Uh, just a little bit different take on kind of tying that custom and manufacturing world kind of together and how a custom guy kind of brought that, that together and made it work for him. So it may not work for all of us. We can't all do that, but uh, I think he's done a good job of making that work in it. And we can kind of look at that and, and maybe use some of those concepts or ideas to uh, better streamline what we do. Um, but this week's episode that'll come out, I'm really excited about. It's a, a little different. He's not a, you know, in the shop craftsman as far as he doesn't really make, he's not a braider or, or a saddle maker or an engraver or anything like that. But he's an artist and a craftsman for sure with the tools that he uses. And a lot of you guys may already know him and have follow him on Instagram and uh, some of his work. And so I'm not going to spill it, but it'll come out. I'm thinking Thursday. My producer said that he wants to try to aim for Thursday as the day that the podcast posts every week. We're starting to build up a little bit of a pipeline to where we shouldn't skip a week, but don't kill me if we do. We may every once in a while skip a week, but uh, we'll try to let you know that if we're not going to have an episode. But so let's look for it on Thursday. He said Thursday, so I'm going to go ahead and tell you Thursday. That's the day he thinks he wants to go ahead and have it post every week. That's when it posted last week, and he kind of seems to like that schedule. So we're going to go with that. If, uh, if it comes out on Friday, we'll blame him. And uh, I don't have no problem blaming him for stuff. That's why you have a producer. You can blame stuff on but that's all I really got for you this week, guys. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get back to work. We've got a lot of stuff to get going. We've got to get this video edited and get it posted for you guys. If you need anything or have any questions, feel free to holler at us at the shop. And uh, me or Claudia will try our best to take care of you. For all of y'all that have bought any of the nice scabbard material packs, the belt material packs, quickly, the belt material packs, yes, I am sold out right now. If you need just a belt material pack and you're not real picky, call the shop and visit with me or Claudia and we can maybe hook you up. The problem is, real quickly, when I'm stripping belts, not every hide of leather or every side of leather is completely blemish free. So we get some coals in there where they've got a bot mark or a scratch or even a break in the finish in that strip. If it's towards the end, it's not a big issue depending on the size of the belt that you're gonna make. So if you're gonna be making a, if your cut length on your belt needs to be 38 and a half inches, 
Well, if the cut's past that, it doesn't matter, you're gonna cut that end off. So the belt is absolutely fine. But if you need 48 inches and it's inside of that, then you've got a pretty good blemish. And I don't wanna send out belt blanks that have blemishes that you can't tool over. Most bot mark scars, scratches, those kind of things, you can tool, when you tool that, even a basket stamp most of the time, when you tool that, you will never see that. So if you do see a little thing and you haven't done very many belts and you're worried about this mark or that, tool it. You won't see it, I promise you. You'll end up backgrounding over that part or you'll basket stamp and it'll land right on it. Just tool it, it'll disappear. If it's a big break in the finish, that's a little harder to get rid of. So, But we wanted to be sure that these material packs, when they go out, they're, they're good because um, some of y'all may be like you have one belt to make and you buy one material pack for me and that's your one shot. You don't have another hide of leather to go to to, oh, well, that one didn't work, we'll get another one. You don't have that option. So I want to be sure that the leather that comes to you is useful and that you're not going to be in a bind. But saying all that to say I have a stack of coals, what I call coals, and I'll use them. Like I can go through them and say, well, I need one that's 38, one that's 52, whatever. And I can sort through and say this one worked for that one, this one worked for that one. Um, but I do have them. And so if you're in a bind and you need, like I need one this week, you know what I mean, so I can get this belt done for a customer, call me, talk to me or Claudia. We'll figure out what size you need and probably hook you up. We have leather coming from Herman Oak again. You guys just bought those belt blanks up so fast every shipment that I haven't been able to keep them on the website. So good problem to have. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for that. But until I get rolling, <clears throat> I still haven't figured out exactly how much leather I'm going to need to keep in the shop. Uh, we've already doubled the order once, and so I don't know if I need to double it again, but this the belt packs in particular seem really, really hot and that y'all really like that and you want those. And so um, we're trying to get that deal uh, figured out to have enough. But I have another shipment that should be here, I'm hoping, in another week. Um, they're, Herman Oaks running about two to three weeks on leather. you got to remember when you order from the tannery, they're actually making your leather. They don't have it in inventory. So I will get an update on that, and I will try to put that on my Instagram stories maybe. Um, or if you're curious, just call the shop um, later this week, and I should have maybe a closer date on when those will be here. And once it gets here, we'll strip it up, and we'll get them back on the website. But like I said, if you are in a pinch and you need it now, um, or it's ASAP kind of deal, call me. Let me see if I can help you. Um, I can't promise you that I'll have a belt strip for you, especially if you need a longer size. That's going to inhibit it a little bit. But you know, if you've got a little bitty belt you need to make or something, somebody with a waist of a 30 inch or something like that, then I probably got a strip that'll work for you. I just don't want to send those out not knowing. I want the belt material packs to be useful and I don't want somebody to be uh, get something that they can't use because there's a big crack in it or something. So we're gonna be being kind of picky. Um, I can work around stuff in the shop a little easier and so we're doing that. But that's really all I got. I appreciate it. If you need anything, let us know. Otherwise, we'll see you next week in the Monday morning briefing video. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Thank you all very much.